So you hear a lot of people say they know how to make money from the stock market, especially when the stock market drops. And that's exactly what's happening right now in the month of September. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how people do this and some strategies that you can use in your portfolio too, specifically with selling bear call spreads or setting up bear call spreads. This is a strategy that I personally use for myself and with my students. And we like to sell these contracts to other people to collect some premiums while we wait for this uncertainty in the stock market to pass. Now, I am going to preface by saying that no, this is not a get rich quick scheme. Yes, you are going to make some money, maybe a couple hundred dollars from these contracts that you sell, but you need to make sure that your portfolio is able to do so. You also wanna make sure that you have the capital to cover yourself to buy 100 shares of the underlying stock so that this way you can convert your bear call spread into a covered call. And if you haven't seen my covered call videos yet, I would watch those first before you watch this video because then it's going Going to make much more sense. And make sure that you watch this video all the way until the very end because I'm going to talk about the pros and cons about setting up a bear call spread. And this is something that you need to be aware of. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, what's been happening in the stock market? Well, this week, the Federal Reserve said that they were going to keep interest rates high right now because they still want to tame inflation. So the stock market kind of reacted negatively and a lot of the stocks in the S&P 500 sold off. If you take a look at SPY, which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, we've been on this upward trend where we've been bouncing off of this support line in blue right here, and we finally broke it right here, and we've been kind of trending downwards. Now, here's the thing, folks, just by looking at the technical charts, uh, I do think that we are going to retrace back upwards, and there's some indicators here because, yeah, we might be on some sort of support line, horizontal support line, at the $430 level. You can see that we bounce off of this back in June 2023, and we might be bouncing off of it again right here. And we can also take a look at the RSI. And you can see that the RSI right now is around 33, meaning that this is usually the level that the S&P 500 likes to kind of bounce off of. And we bounce off of this RSI level back in August 18, 2023, and again back in March 2023, and so on and so forth in the past. So it is possible that we might retrace back upwards and even try to fill in this gap that we had the last day or so. However, with that said, this doesn't mean that we are absolutely going to bounce up. It is still possible that we continue to sell off because this red candlestick is pretty strong. It is possible that we break through and maybe even drop down to maybe like the $420 level here. But that's okay because you're watching this video and we actually want the stock market to drop or even trend sideways so that this way we can collect some premium from selling our bear call spread. And if you want to take a look at some of the historical data, you can go to moneychimp.com to see how well we performed on a monthly basis and just kind of play around, toggle some of these buttons here. If I click on September, you can see that all the way from 1950 to 2022, we typically have some sort of down month. On average, we usually drop around 0.8%. You can see that back in 2022, we dropped 8%, 2021, we dropped 4%, 2020, 4%, and then so on and so forth. Now, this doesn't mean that we always drop because there are some up years too. But if you take a look at the overall historical data, we've had around 32 up years, but 41 down years. And in October, you can see that we usually have a positive return. However, you can also see that in the last couple of recent years, back in 2020, we've had a negative 3% drop, 2018, a negative 7% drop. So I don't know, we might have a negative year in October too, but if we were to take a look at that long-term history, we might have some sort of positive return. And typically as we enter November and December, where we have some sort of Santa Claus rally, we typically have a rise in the stock market, a lot of portfolio managers will start to reallocate their portfolios and start to buy more shares. So this way they can show their clients what it is that they purchased. And then they want to make their clients happy because of course, if they make money, then they also make a percentage of that too. Okay. So let's talk about selling bear call spreads and how to do this step-by-step, step, which I'm going to show you on my think or swim web platform. For my example that I'm going to use today, I'm going to use Google. The ticker symbol is G O O G L. 
well. And you can see that Google has been on an upward rise. We've been kind of in this upward channel right here ever since the end of 2022 last year and beginning of 2023. And we've been kind of undulating to upwards here. Now you can see that of course, just like with the rest of the stock market, Google also dropped very violently. And it's possible that we might drop a little bit even more all the way down to this green line right here. But of course we can always bounce back up. Anything can happen in the stock market. But I like Google and Here's the thing, I know it's kind of contradicting. I want to own Google for the long term, but I think that Google is going to drop in the short term. And because I have this bias, I am going to then set up a bear call spread or sell a bear call spread. And by looking at the charts, I'm going to say or predict that Google is not going to reach the 143 level, around the 140 level in the next couple of days. And if it does, that's awesome. We're going to have a plan for it, but we're just gonna say that Google is not it's going to hit $143 within the next 30 to 45 days. And that might continue to drop or maybe even trend sideways from now until the expiration date, which again, I'll talk about in a bit. So this is how you set up a bear call spread. Very similar to a covered call where you have to do two steps. Step one, you're going to buy 100 shares. And then step two, you sell the call option contract against the 100 shares and you collect the premium. With a bear call spread, it's very similar, but the problem with a cover call is if you buy the 100 shares and the underlying stock drops, then you're going to have an unrealized loss in your portfolio because you're holding the 100 shares. So to kind of counteract that, what you can do is you can set up a bear call spread and do the order of operations opposite from setting up a cover call trade. So with a cover call, you're gonna buy 100 shares and then you're going to sell a call option contract. But with a bear call spread, what we're going to do is we're going to reverse that and we're going to sell the call option first and then and if we need to cover ourselves, then we'll buy the 100 shares. So hopefully you can see it's the opposite order of steps for a covered call. Okay, so I know what you're going to ask me, Steve, how can you sell that call option contract if you don't have the 100 shares initially? That's actually a good question. And that's what a bear call spread is. So instead of just selling the call option contract first, which you actually can't do, unless you're approved for options for level trading, which I don't recommend, what you need to first do is buy a call option contract first, something that is way out of the money, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and then you can sell the call option contract. When you buy that first out of the money call option contract, it's going to be a proxy or a substitution of 100 shares. Once you have that call option contract, you can then sell another call option contract, just like what you would do for a covered call, and then collect that premium. Hopefully this all makes sense, but if it doesn't, don't worry, because I'm going to do it step by step in the next couple of minutes, so hang on tight. Okay, so I'm on the Think or Swim web platform right here, and I'm going to type in my ticker symbol GO, OGL, which is the ticker symbol for Google. I'm going to go to the option chain, which is basically, again, like what I've said in my past videos, it's a marketplace of where people like to buy and sell their option contracts. I'm going to go out further in expiration today. Uh, usually I like to choose an expiration that's around 30 to 45 days away, but I'm going to make an exception and choose a further out expiration dates. So this way I can get more extrinsic value. I'm going to choose the November 17th expiration, which is around 57 days away. I'm going to open that up. And remember how I said that with Google, I don't think it's going to really reach 143 dollars within the next couple of days so because of that i'm going to take a look at the option chain and look under the strike price of around 143 dollars or somewhere around there well 143 dollars doesn't show up here so i'm going to go up in price and choose the 145 dollar strike price right here and this is the price that i don't think google is going to really reach within the next couple of days this is the call option contract that i'm going to sell at so remember with the option chain call options are usually denoted on the left-hand side, all the put options on the right-hand side. And because we're selling a bear call spread, we're going to focus our attention on the left-hand side. I'm going to take a look at the strike price of 145. And because I'm selling a call option contract, I'm going to look under the bid column, not the ask column. I'm going to line it up and I can see that I can sell a call option contract for $158 per contract. And then I'm going to click on this. Okay, so going back to that initial question of, Steve, how can you sell a call option contract if you don't own 100 shares first? 
And that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now. I need to first buy an, another out of the money call option contract, which is going to act as a proxy, a substitution of 100 shares. So then this way I can then sell the call option contract against it. So going back to the option chain, I'm going to scroll all the way down here and I'm going to choose a further out of the money call option contract, maybe around the $175 strike price right here. So you can see that because now that I'm buying a call option contract, I'm going to look under the ask column and I can buy this call option contract for $9. So here's what's happening. Step number one, I'm going to buy a call option contract, the $175 strike price for $9. This is going to act as a 100 share proxy, just like with a cover call. So this way I can then sell my call option contract against it. Step number two, I'm then going to sell this $145 strike call option contract and collect $158 from it. So if you do the math, $158 collected minus $9, that's going to be around $140 nine dollars that we make that we are going to collect as our premium i'm going to make sure that all my toggles are correct i am selling one call option contract for the november 17th expiration for 145 dollars strike price and this is a call option and then i'm also buying a call option with the same expiration date at the $175 strike price. And this is also a call option here. I'm going to click on review and submit and boom, I should be able to collect around 149, 150, $155 right here. It's based on what the bid ask spread is, but that's how much credit I'm going to collect. And then I can hit send and I'm done. Okay, so this is where it gets really important. This is where I talk about the contingencies of what is going to happen on the day of expiration, because really two things are going to happen. So scenario number one, if Google stays below $145 by the time of expiration, that's actually very good for us because what's going to happen is both of the contracts that we have, the one that we bought and the one that we sold are all going to decay by theta. They're all going to expire worthless, meaning that we can keep the entire premium of $140, $150. And hopefully everyone can see that this is a statistically favorable trade because Google can go up, down or sideways and still make money. So why is this? It's because if Google continues to trend downwards, that's good for our bear call spread because that's what we want the underlying stock to do. Or if the stock just trends sideways, then our call option contracts are going to decay by theta. And even if Google starts to trend upwards, if it doesn't trend upwards fast enough by the time of expiration to our strike price, then yeah, both of our contracts are going to decay by theta and expire worthless. So this is the optimal strategy where we want the underlying stock to trend sideways, go down, or maybe even if it goes up, it doesn't really hit the $145 strike price by the time of expiration. Okay, so here's scenario number two. If the stock starts to trend up to $143, $144 before it hits the $145 strike price, what we need to do is I'm going to buy 100 shares of Google. So this way I can deliver them to the other party for $145. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's okay. You can watch my cover call videos that I made in the past and I have a whole bunch of them on my channel. So when I set up this bear call spread, what I usually like to do as my third step is I like to set a buy stop order. So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to go to the top right hand corner. I'm going to click on buy and I'm going to buy 100 shares of Google only if Google starts to rise up. This means that I'm going to change my market order into a stop order or a buy stop order. And remember my strike price was $145. I'm then going to want to purchase 100 shares of Google at $144. So I'm going to type that price in right here, $144, 100 shares of them. I'm then going to change this day order into a GTC or a good till cancel. I'm going to click on review and then submit so what does this mean? This means that if Google starts to rise up and it starts to hit $143, $144, then my brokerage is automatically going to buy 100 shares of Google for $144. And again, this is why I said in order to place this trade, you want to make sure that you have the capital to buy 100 shares of Google to cover yourself. When it hits $144, that's awesome. And if it continues to move on upwards, that's very good for us because then we're going to make some capital gains. Because we bought the shares for $144 and we sold the strike price, a call option strike price for $145, we're going to sell all of our shares for 
for $145 each. This means that we're going to make a $100 profit because we bought the shares for $144 and we're selling them for $145. This is a $1 difference. And one times 100 shares is a $100 capital gain. Not only do we get the $100 capital gain, we also made the premium from the credit spread or the bear call spread. The $100 plus the $150 worth of premiums or $140, whatever it is that we get, then altogether that's a $240, $250 profit right there. And if the stock continues to rise, then that's actually good for us because remember that call option contract that we purchased? Maybe, just maybe, that call option contract that we purchased at the $175 strike might go up in value too. Because remember, whenever we buy a call option and the underlying stock goes up, then that call option is most likely going to increase in price because it's a derivative of what the underlying stock does. If the underlying stock goes up, call options typically like to rise up. If the underlying stock drops, then the call option will typically like to drop as well. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this trade. Pro number one, this is a statistically favorable trade because remember, we can kind of win in all three directions of the underlying stock. If it drops, that's good for us. If Google starts to trend sideways, theta eats away from the contracts. And the same thing with if the stock rises up, but not as aggressively all the way to the strike price that we choose. If it doesn't hit that strike price by expiration, we also quote unquote win too. And pro number two is if the stock does go up and goes above our strike price, we're able to cover ourselves, convert our bear call spread into a cover call, and then we can make another $100 capital gain or whatever it is that we choose as our buy stop order, and then make some more money on top of the premium that we collected from the bear call spread. This is a strategy that a lot of institutional traders like to place on where they set up a whole bunch of bear call spreads. They sell the call option contracts where the stock market just typically just trends sideways and let theta decay away from their call option contracts and they can just collect all these premiums. Okay, so let's talk about the cons to this trade. It is very possible that the stock goes up and then maybe it'll trigger our buy stop order where we'll purchase 100 shares for $144 and then all of a sudden the stock just drops. This is going to give us an unrealized loss because then we're going to have 100 shares of Google and then the underlying stock drops. And this is why, again, I like to say I want to set up a bear call spread on a stock that I am bullish long term. So this way I don't mind holding on to 100 shares. The second con is sometimes with the stock market, it is possible that we might have a gap up. This means that if we set up a buy stop order at $144 and all of a sudden Google releases very good news and then the price shoots up above $144, it just skips over $144, maybe it'll be at $143 one day and then jump up to $145 the next day, then our buy stop order might be triggered too late and we might instead buy our shares for $145, $146 instead, or wherever it ends up the next day, compared to what we wanted to buy the shares for, which is $144. And I guess the third con for this is it's a more capital intensive trade, just like with a covered call. Because remember, you you need to have the capital to buy 100 shares to cover yourself just in case the stock goes up and hits the strike price by the time of expiration. And going back to what I said earlier, you want to be bullish on it in the long term and you want to be willing to purchase 100 shares. And if this is something that you don't want to do, I would not set up this bear call spread in this fashion. And yes, this is how I set up my bear call spreads and what works for me. And I know there are a lot of traders out there where maybe the width of their spread might be a little bit smaller. Some people like to make theirs wider, but this is typically what I like to do. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this trade, let me know in the comments below. If you have any ideas on any future video topics, you can also let me know in the comments and I'm gonna try my best to make them in the future. If you found a lot of value in this video, feel free to give me a like and subscribe and I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.